everybody, Kevin and Han here with the Niche Movement Podcast. You're tuning into an episode where we're gonna talk about followership, how to grow it, how to build your audience. We take a lot of great questions and comments from some of our fans, and we really talk about where, where I started from, what tools I used, and what tools are working for others, and how you can really you know, start to get noticed, um, you know, whether you're putting yourself out there as a personal brand, or you have a company organization or something within your department that you're trying to kind of get some traction with and, and try to put some content out there. So tune in, it's a great episode, and we really appreciate the people that have tuned in so far with their questions and comments. Yes, the questions have made my day. I'm so excited to talk to like other people because they know a lot and they have a lot to share and I want to encourage people to write to us because we, we will answer your questions. It's that yes, easy. Yes, we will. But uh, enjoy. Hey everybody, Kevin O'Connell here with the Niche Movement Podcast, episode 10, coming at you from a new room here in the WeWork Crystal City office. And then I tell Hannah and Dan, I've been texting them all week, this podcast is gonna evolve every single week, every single episode. So those are that went backwards and watched and listened to all the other podcast episodes. And those of you that are catching up just now, we have a lot in store. The first thing you can tell Dan and Hannah, I already know my tendencies, this little ball here, is to keep me busy and make sure I don't tap the table because I know Dan's shaking his head right now and all the uh, editing he had to do to this audio. And uh, so we have little things here. Uh, we have little props uh, that we're gonna go a long way. We just met some of our neighbors here at WeWork that we're gonna be interviewing in the coming weeks. But I'm gonna turn it over to Hannah. She's gonna tell us what we're gonna be talking about here in episode 10 and what to expect. Yes, so our topic for today is um, how to spread your message and get followers. Uh, but since the last episode, we've actually had some viewer feedback. So we have some questions here from people who've tuned in and we're gonna address those coming up as we talk. Cool, where do you want, where do you want to start? So you to spread a message and gain followers, I would say the first step is figuring out what your message is. That seems pretty basic. Sure. So yeah. I was curious to know if the mission statement sure. is outdated at this point. Like, do hmm. you still have to figure out your cause in a two to three sentence yeah. little snippet? Yeah, I, I think in the last three to s probably six months, I have it pretty concise. And you know, when people ask me what I do, I say it's a loaded question. And I think depending on the setting and the mood I'm in, and as well as um, what I think will resonate with the person or, or you know organization I'm talking to will re how it'll resonate I'll kind of either go the, the niche human career route leadership route or I'll go the whole digital storytelling photo video social media guy mm -hmm. um, but I can remember when I first started this out three years ago this time uh, the tagline for niche human was um, helping student leaders like find their passion or niche so it was very specific yeah and now it's evolved to help you know a community of young professionals and I think we have people from all over the country and all different age groups. So it's evolved because I want it to evolve, but I think it's also evolved because the community helped it evolve. Sure. So. And it helps that it's kind of become broader because then you can appeal to more people and more people can understand your message, I suppose. Yeah. And sometimes that's, I, I deal with that. You know, my wife was asking me last night, like, you know, I'm trying to do some other stuff. She's like, well, who are these videos going to be for? Mm -hmm. And I think trying to come up with that specific, per that specific type of person or industry is sometimes tough. So. Yeah, so that, that actually is very important when you're trying to spread a message. I would say that doing a little bit of market research, figuring mm -hmm. out who the message is intended for is pretty yeah. important. Yeah. Um, so how do you make your mission statement or your cause kind of appeal to others or make it relatable yeah. to those people? Yeah. So I think a lot of you watching or people that I know that are, are following this, you probably have heard from me or from your network or from some other colleagues, uh, Simon Sinek, Start With The Why, which is a video I actually haven't shared with you guys. Yeah, I haven't seen that um, one. You guys are the first, like, college students and interns that that's usually one of the first things I start with like day one and and we're like day 35 40 in and I, I we I think we need to do this but so that whole start with the why and Craig Adams who again is somebody I met through Twitter got to meet in New York City uh, about a year ago but he says like if you know your why the how and what will follow I think that's what he said right yeah, that is. so Craig thanks for chiming in we're going to kind of evolve your questions and comments here in a little bit but you know, I know my why, and I think, especially with the niche movement, talking to Andrew, who just came in here, um, is like, I'm really, you know, intrigued of, of like helping others find the work they love because I think mm -hmm. that's something we all strive for. We strive for others, you know, our significant others, our brothers, sisters, our parents, et cetera. 
Um, and so I think that self and its why, just helping others find the work they love is such a powerful why. Mm -hmm. um, and I want to wake up one day where we can kind of alleviate employment on happiness, even though I think that's going to be a very tough hill to climb. So. Agreed. Um, well, so once you've figured out your why, the whole thing is that you want to get your message out there. You want to tell your story. Mm -hmm. That's our big thing. So what are the first steps? And I think actually someone chimed in on this as well. Where do you start when you're trying to get your message out? Like where's the first place, maybe what's the most important mm -hmm. or the yeah. best place to start? Yeah. Um, I'm not sure if that was Eric or Amy, maybe you can double check, but I think the first place to start. Yeah, that was Amy. Yeah, so, you know, I think we can attack this from two angles and I like to be able to do that from either the entrepreneurship side, like, hey, I have an idea or a side hustle concept or, it's just, hey, I'm trying to build my personal brand for my next professional move. I think we all have ideas. So whether it's entrepreneur side or, or your personal side, we all have these ideas. I think it's actually like, I tell, I tell all you guys this all the time, just start throwing darts. Um, Is it kind of a numbers game in that yeah, sense? Yeah, like I, we talked about this in previous uh, two episodes ago, maybe I think like we still don't have it figured out. Like, I just start throwing darts, you know, I'm periscoping now, like I'm trying different things. I'm trying different, uh, we're trying different things with our, the client work that we do. We're, we're doing different pieces, putting different pieces of content out there. So I think really it's throwing darts and then seeing what hits. Mm -hmm. um, and I think if we go back and look at our content that we're putting out and, and how we're doing it, I think we can set some benchmarks and see what's happening. But so I think ideas are great, but until you execute on them, so hey, like I have an idea for this, go try it out, go talk to somebody. Or I have an idea, is create a website, create a blog. Uh, and these are things we're gonna talk about, I think in episode 11, but really it's the, the execution and throwing the dart is, is trumps the idea. So it's just getting started, True. which is tough. And of course, different things work for different businesses. So of course, if you're, you know, Pivotal Labs, you're not necessarily yeah. gonna go out and make a, a music video or something necessarily too creative like that because it's not your target audience mm -hmm. so a lot of our viewers are probably into creative mm -hmm. um i mean every every field really but with us we're creative yeah. so where was the first place you started when you began yeah. was it facebook was it twitter yeah. was it instagram and i know you, you yeah. began like yeah. what, 2008 was it um well this actually it's it's we were right around that three and a half mark but it was February of 2013, I launched the blog and learning WordPress. Um, and if anybody uses WordPress, I'm, I really love to hear your thoughts on this, uh, was a bear. Um, my wife and I were both learning WordPress for our own personal and professional reasons. And it takes a lot of Googling, a lot of forum reading, a lot of experimenting with code, experimenting with different pages, themes, templates, etc. And uh, that's where I started. Um, you know, it was that, it was getting the Twitter handle, the domain, and the Facebook handle. Um, and, and really, once I launched that WordPress site, I had a skeleton at least. Mm -hmm. And uh, since moving to Squarespace, that's been a breeze. I think you've picked it up, Dan's picked it up, yeah. a lot of people have picked up the user-friendly side that's of it. But good. it's clean, it, it fits the current state of like what websites feel and look like on a mobile device and on uh, a, a desktop. But, but that WordPress site was probably the first thing I started with was a, was a website. And, and I now have my own personal website as well. So having that landing page was the first spot. Yeah, so. I think I can relate to that because uh, my boyfriend and I recently started Red mm -hmm. Hatchet Outdoors. And Give the plug. Yeah, what is redhatchetoutdoors.com. Yeah. <laughs> um, so the first step was that we bought the domain name. So that was where we started as well. Yeah. Um, he's into WordPress, he knows all that stuff. Mm -hmm. I do the creative, so I made the cool. logo and all that. So we had like our branding and we had the URL. And then from there, I think we went to Facebook first and sure. then Instagram and then Twitter was our progression. Yeah. So. And then you, and you got to put out content, which I think exactly, you guys are doing. Yeah. And I think a lot of our followers and people have chimed in. You just, you got to put out content. And, um, and I think some of the stuff Craig said here, I don't know where we want to go with this, but he gave some really good insight, so. Yeah, Craig, Craig Adams, um, thanks for tuning in. <laughs> He mentioned that he makes a huge effort to uh, get out content, respond to messages, emails, tweets, all that stuff. And he believes that it makes a huge impact for the small amount of time that it takes. And I think that's a good, good measure. You can just put out one single message mm -hmm. and it reaches much farther than you could ever imagine yeah. sometimes. So it is worth the time to put in to 
Yeah. To do that. Yeah, I think you know whether you have nine followers, you're just starting out, or I know Craig with what he's doing with Wedding Film School, he has a lot of followers. He's seen a lot of growth, but literally, I spend two to three minutes on my commute here in the mornings, favoriting tweets, retweeting, liking, going back and engaging with people both on the Niche Movement account, and my personal account, mm -hmm. uh, through Twitter, through Instagram, through Snapchat. So I think what was his quote, but like that whole one minute, that one minute of work makes so much impact. Mm -hmm. And I think some people think that like doing social media is a waste of time or they don't see the benefits of it, but it's that long-term like cre creating a, a relationship with somebody. And I think the people that we've been fortunate enough to have chime in, we've been doing that. Yeah. So, yeah. And I think as you said, maybe in uh, episode eight, was it, um, it only takes one. It only takes one project, yeah, one, is one better client, than zero. one follower. Yeah. So you never know who's out there, who's going to be seeing your content. So yeah. it's, I, worth, I think it's worth it. Some of these topics are overlapping, but I know that's what we're going to talk about in episode 11 of like ways to yes. put yourself out there and some of the outcomes. I know we have some great stories lined up for that. Yes. But on the content side, I did have another question about yeah. that. So is there a certain amount of content that you need to be putting out to get your message out there effectively? Mm -hmm. um, how much time should you yeah. devote to putting out the message versus... Mm -hmm. all the other stuff, like administrative, yeah. sure. all the other stuff that goes along with that. So for those of you that may know or, or, or don't know, I mean, being an entrepreneur and, and really growing this as a solopreneur, like it's the finance side, it's the business development, it's, it's the sales, it's the contract, it's the actual execution. It's then bringing on teams and training and, and, and facilitating what needs to get done next. It's, it's at any given moment, there's a handful that needs to get done. Mm -hmm. And I, I really think we've built a little bit of an infrastructure to put out content, both for our clients that we're working with as well as the initial here. We got the podcast, we have Mandy uh, helping out with the blog on a weekly basis. Uh, we have Dan f doing videos for us. So we've created a little bit of an infrastructure. Mm -hmm. And I think whether you are a solo person trying to create a personal brand or you are working for an organization, be that education, nonprofit, finance, et cetera, your, your department, your little team, you need to have a little team to put out content. Mm -hmm. And I think it's, do what you know, do what you're comfortable with. I think we were both just saying this, like we all, we're both still a little bit nervous. We have two lights, we have a camera, we have the podcast, we have Periscope. We're still both a little bit nervous to do this, but I know I'm getting a little bit more comfortable each time and we're sticking to what we know. We're not trying to do something we don't know. That's why we have Dan doing the camera stuff. Um, so stick to what you know and chunk away. But I think if you spread yourself too thin on all these platforms, I would say, hey, I'm gonna go fully Snapchat for 30 days, fully Instagram for 30 mm -hmm. days, and then see what, what works on Talk one or two balance. of those platforms. I'm curious like what you guys are doing with the Red Hatchet. Like, have you be like, hey, we're gonna just stick to Instagram or are you trying to spread it everywhere? Or Yeah, I don't think we're that um, experimental. Yeah. We kind of push everything. So we'll come out with a blog post, which goes out on redhatchetoutdoors.com. Mm -hmm. Then we push that through to Facebook, uh, Twitter, Instagram. Um, but it all kind of happens at yeah. the same time. So we don't really see necessarily the results like right yeah away. like if it's working yeah, yeah and i think you guys need to experiment you're only like a month in i think but um yeah. i would experiment and see what's working so yes well i also would like to make a little plug here for buffer <laughs> so yeah. when we're talking about how like for just a minute worth of work you yeah. can get a whole lot out of it buffer is a really good tool for us i find that if i sit down and i can buffer out you know a month or more yeah. in advance yeah and it just kind of happens then you can get that out of the way you kind of front load it you get the work done and then it kind of just keeps coming. yeah it, it somewhat automate uh, automates it for us and you know we do real-time stuff just posting to, to twitter and, and instagram before we started we also have content scheduled between hannah myself dan uh mandy out in chicago we we have different things you know being produced right now that is going to hit our audience at all different times so it's a good complement of i think i've told you like try to keep that 70 30 rule of like mm -hmm. I wouldn't push more than 70% of automated content uh, and I wouldn't do it more than three or four days in a row or three or four days out because, you know, different things can pop up in the news, pop culture, your, your, your agenda might change. Yes. And I think you should have at least 30, 30 to 40% of that to be organic, real time content. So people know like there's an actual human being person, yeah. in person behind it. So, yeah. and I'll argue with you that like the buffer <laughs> doesn't totally remove that human element because of course you can go back yeah. and edit, change yep. things, whatever. Yep. Um, and then you do supplement that with yeah. other things. Yeah. Um, but I've found it helpful in the sense that when you get the thought, you can schedule it out. Even if you know you don't want to do it this week, mm -hmm. you can get that kind of out of the way yeah. and then it's done. Um, but yeah, of course there's, 
personal yeah. aspect, which is nice. Yep. Um, I find personally that with my own Instagram, which is not a brand or anything, it's just mm. my personal account, I get behind. So like, yeah. I think last night I just recently- Yeah, I, I noticed that. You posted pictures. like three or four Instagram pics in yeah. a row. So, and one of them was real time because I could tell because one of them was at the thunderstorm. Oh, exactly. Yes. Yeah. So I, I yeah. got caught up last night, but I get behind a lot. So okay. um, that's why I find Buffer useful is because you can kind of get ahead of the yeah. game instead of playing catch up, yeah. which I often have to do. What else um, did our audience members chime in? I, I know I have one or two other concepts I want to share on how to grow yes. an audience. Or, but what, uh, what are other questions, questions? Or that I liked a lot was yeah. uh, Matt Ebert. Yeah. He asked from Virginia Tech. Oh, awesome. Yeah. Um, he asked, how do you check slash balance putting yourself out there and being authentic? So when you're pushing out so much content, yeah. Uh, yeah. like you don't want quantity to override yeah. quality. So how do you keep that personal aspect to it without, you know, selling out or just, you know. Yeah. So I th again, depending on the platform you're using, but, you know, for example, I'll, I'll talk about what I do on Twitter and Snapchat. Like. Snapchat, I'll do everything from talking, like yesterday I, I showed a couple things of like following up and, and all the outreach and emails and things that we're doing, like that's the, the, the non-glorious side of entrepreneurship. Then all the way to like me getting home and like taking a picture of my dog or cooking dinner. That. Like you wanna show that you're a real human being, you're not just pushing your agenda. Mm -hmm. I think you also wanna have some like funny, relatable content that right. like your friends, audience can still relate to. Same thing on Twitter, you know, going back to these ratios of like an 80-20 rule. I, I like to have like 80% content that is value to people to want to read, to engage with, at replies, mm -hmm. talking with people, going back and forth. Um, like just this morning, like talking with people like uh, what new in, you know, G, uh, mailbox app to use because that, this app mailbox is being, uh, is being basically deleted as of tomorrow. So I had like six people tweet me back and we were engaging in this conversation this morning. And so, global community. yeah. And so like when you have like 10 or 15 of those tweets, then you can put two or three out that is like, Hey, uh, I know right now for me, it's like, check out my keynote reel, check out the video I did with AU, listen to our podcast. Mm -hmm. But again, our podcast is kind of a value add because I hope people are learning and getting some stuff out of it. So exactly. it's that balance game. I think Matt, like we've done some training together. I think you know that what you're doing with about campus, I think you should totally just replicate that with yourself. Is that, is that balance act of like that 80, 20 rule. And it is good to have checks and balances, just like the government. I mean, like you can't just be pushing out, yeah. you know, retweets or reblogs of other yeah. things. You have to have their, your personal yeah. concept to it, uh, which actually reminds me of something Amo was saying. Yeah. Um, so having an audience, she says, is a privilege yes. grounded in trust and you're not to abuse that or take it for granted. So yes. I think that's kind of, that plays into the whole personal thing. You don't want to just be forcing content on people. You're mm -hmm. not, they're not your captive audience that has to listen no, to what you have to say. You want to make it beneficial for the mutually beneficial. Yeah, uh, Amma's a good friend of ours. And and when I saw that, it, it, I think it should resonate with a lot of people because whether you're building your own personal brand or you're, you're putting out content on behalf of your department, organization, or business, the fact that you have, going back to this one is greater than zero thing, the fact that we have one person that wants to buy our book here at WeWork to the fact that we have one client that wants to work with us, you know, it's a privilege that one person respects that what we're doing. And so you never want to take it for granted. And it's every day that like you got to, you're, you're grateful whether you're an entrepreneur or you're, you're in your own, mm -hmm. you know, your own full-time job that somebody will listen to you. Cool. So, yeah, I think that was a very good pearl of wisdom from Alma there. Mm -hmm. um, so let's see, uh, Nicole also, asked a question this is more broad so it's kind mm -hmm. of taking it back a step yeah but um i do want to address it because we love nicole yeah um so she helped us out with uh the e-course that we're running right now there's a plug right there if yes. you're looking to find your purpose we'll, we'll give our plug right now is is go to udemy there's a find your find purpose in your career e-course with gen 20 in the niche movement yes so her question is how do you find people to connect with so i think that's like how do you find your audience mm -hmm. who are the people that you want to find and how do you find them like i know Twitter is pretty global, like everyone tweets. Mm -hmm. um, so how do you find the people, like do you hashtag yeah. specifically or yeah. how do you find the people that you want to get your message, message to specifically? Yeah. Well, I think you you know this a little bit since we've been doing outreach mm -hmm. um, this month. Two of the ways that I, you know, again, I'm kind of bringing this back to the business entrepreneurship side, but it's relatable to if you're trying to do job searching or you're trying to connect with people to maybe be featured on your blog, but Twitter search, uh, you know, we will search 
DC conferences and events, DC, um, you know, DC new businesses happening, and we'll kind of create a list and be able to be, you know, just one, hey, congratulations, or hey, this looks like an awesome conference. But then we might dig a little bit deeper and see like, you know, what the conference is about. Does it look innovative or something that we want to capture? And then going all the way to discovering an email. But I think you can do the same thing on LinkedIn. And don't like start sending these like generic LinkedIn messages. I would actually search for the companies that you want to work for and then start, you know, searching for, for them. And then if you want to get into the marketing department, find who the chief marketing officer is. Mm -hmm. Find out who the human resource, resource person is. Find out who the finance person is. Like whatever department you want to work in within those companies, then, you know, create that list of 10, 20, 30 people. Then jump on, on Google search or Twitter search or Instagram, know. Instagram search. Find out like, again, the personal side, what are they talking about? Mm -hmm. Can you favor something? Can you engage? Um, and if you do that 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 times, you're gonna have one or two people mm -hmm. that like will write you back. Yep. Um, and again, these are stories we're gonna talk about in episode 11, but you just gotta put in some of those, like don't be afraid to put yourself out there a little bit and mm -hmm. you gotta stack the deck really. Yes. Whether it's job search, entrepreneurship, cold emailing, cold whatever, um, you gotta stack the deck. So. Agreed. That reminds me of uh, last year in school, I did a project where I was curious about one of the founders of Flickr, which is the Yahoo sponsored photo yeah. site. Um, one of the sponsors, Karina, Katarina, I think her name is. Okay. Um, I never really used Twitter before, mm -hmm. thought I'd try it, tweeted at her, and she responded. And yeah. it was like one of the coolest things that's happened. I mean, what's like, the worst that can happen? I got an A on oh, the project, yeah. let's just that's say awesome. that. So. <laughs> there you yeah, go. Yeah, so you have to, you know, you have to try. Yeah. Dan's dropping stuff in the background. He's, he's giving us heat for the audio and then he's dropping his phone and <laughs> iPad and stuff. <laughs> we're gonna get and it's your phone. It's we're going we're gonna to get Dan on camera. It looks like the periscope is down. Yeah. One, one thing I'd like to add before we kind of start to slowly wrap this up is one of the best things that I think we've done for the niche movement um, I think it was a, probably about a year and a half ago, we had a, a student from Princeton interning with us. And we were, again, just very s starting out. I was just still a side hustle for me. And uh, she had the idea of like, why don't we start adding contributing editors? Um, I remember Ama being one of the first ones. There, there's, there's a handful, but now we're like 18, 20 strong and, and growing. We just added a few more. And again, you talk about needing content and wanting content and to build that audience. You know, I try to write one to two times a week and, and try to put out at least one piece of content, whether that be video or written word. Mm -hmm. And now next thing I know, we've organically grown to 20 some contributing editors, some that write more frequently than others, but they all, again, going back to the why, they resonate with adulting and, and mm -hmm. living your 20s and, and how to really get a job, how to really network. And their advice uh, oftentimes, is, is better than mine because their perspective is completely different from a different industry, from a different background. They've had more adversity or more opportunities. Um, and so I think if you have a platform, whatever that might be, having contributing editors or what we're gonna start doing in the next couple of weeks, bringing guests on mm -hmm. because they have their own followers. You know, uh, we bring Dan on and then all of a sudden Dan's girlfriend and, and friends and brothers and sisters wanna listen. Mm -hmm. We've picked up 10 new listeners. Exactly. So I think uh, don't let it just be yourself, especially if people are rallying around the idea. Mm -hmm. Invite people to find a way to contribute because yes. we've been grateful that so many people have wanted to help with the course, the blogging, the podcast. Um, so it's, it's really you know, enlightening to see how many people want to help out. So. Yep. Anything Very else? Cool. Um, I guess that just kind of brings me back to the topic of like, Kind of designating so like yeah. you have your editors who contribute yeah. because that's what they love to do and they're good at it mm -hmm. so of course push that content yeah. that just takes one less thing for you to have to do you don't yeah. have to do everything you can let yeah. someone else do what they're good yeah. at which kind yeah. of brings the quality back up we were talking about quantity versus quality yeah and i think that quality is maintained when you're able to give some yeah. jobs to certain people and keep some jobs for yourself just yeah Divide the workload. Yeah. Again, knowing, knowing your strengths. Um, mm -hmm. That's think, one of the first things that you talk about in, in the book, right? In the book. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. And you got to know your strengths and, and especially as you're growing your audience, just, just like we've kind of created this team of you, Hannah, doing craft design and, and being co-host and Dan being behind camera and taking care of some editing stuff. And, and then the three of us coming up with the, the episodes and, and we have our notes and list and, and the way we want to promote it. Mm -hmm. um, and someday, knock on wood, get a sponsor. Um, I mean, these are all things that 
if I want to do this by myself, I, I couldn't do this. Mm-hmm. Um, and so when you can employ a team and recruit people that see your vision and stuff, I think is a good thing. So, and you can't yeah. be afraid to ask. Exactly. So, so I think that's a good place to wrap it up. Yep. Um, of course, we'd love to hear back from our viewers and listeners. Yep. Um, if you have any comments about this or any advice, anything to share, we'd love to hear it. Thanks so much for listening, guys. And uh, I believe as we did in the last two episodes, uh, we'd love to hear from you. What's something you're working on that you're super grateful and happy for? Kind of going back to what Ama said, you know, what is something that you feel like you, you, you're, you, uh, you don't take for granted? And, um, and what is something you might be struggling with that we can help with? And if we didn't get to any questions, uh, please let us know and we will make sure we answer them through Twitter. Thanks so much for tuning in, guys, and we will see you for episode 11. Yes. On, and the topic is? Um, well, it's ways to put yourself out there. Yes. So if you're looking to take that leap of faith, um, we, will, uh, we will talk about that. Yes, and hopefully yeah. we'll sum it up in like five or so easy steps. Yes. Thanks so All much right. for listening, guys. Yay!